I'm Emma Massingale and I train horses in a special way, without reins or restraints. And now I'm going to put my methods to the ultimate test. I've brought two completely unbroken Highland ponies, Hector and Huey, to join the horses I already have back in Devon. Hey boys! To build up a relationship and understanding of these ponies, I'm taking them to the environment they were bred for, a trek across their ancestral home of the Scottish Highlands. So this is where our journey starts. I'm on the east coast of Scotland. You can see Olness Bay just behind me. Ahead of us, we have a 100-mile hike that's going to take us 10 days before arriving at Journey's End on the west coast. Although Highland ponies are bred to be hardy and tough, it's not going to be easy. Uh -oh. We'll have to tackle bogs, fast-flowing water and mountainous terrain. And by the end, I'm hoping that we'll have bonded enough for the ponies to let me ride them. Come on then, boys, let's go. As we don't know each other yet, I have to use a lead to stop them from wandering off, which is something they're not used to. It's been extremely hard work. Hector here is much more amenable and much braver. Huey is quite stubborn. Come on, Huey! Having him pull on the rope all the time makes it just double the effort. Although the going is tough, we need to cover at least 10 miles a day. We've just come all the way down from the mountains and it's been an incredibly hard day. I'm absolutely shattered. I think the ponies are too. And think I might try and find camp along the river somewhere tonight. As we're still building trust, the ponies need to be tethered to stop them running away. You're right. Good boys. Unlike us, horses only need a couple of hours sleep a day, so by four o'clock the next morning, the boys are ready to leave camp. But it's mid-season, so I have this rather fetching hat to try and keep them at bay, while the ponies have nature on their side. The Highlands have such a thick coat, which I'm sure helps them cope with the midges. You can see here their skin is really thick, much thicker than any other pony I've ever experienced. As we continue on our journey, leading these ponies doesn't get any easier. Horses are herd animals, and Hector and Huey have certainly formed a strong bond. But at the moment, two's company and three's a crowd, so I need to make some changes so I'm not left out. So my plan for today is to try and pal up with Hector. So we're going to pick the nicest grass, offer him the best places to stop, and really try and build on my relationship with him, as it seems to be we get on a little bit better than with Huey. As for Huey, I'm taking a bit of a gamble and letting him off the lead. I'm hoping as he sees me and Hector having a good time, he'll want to stick with us. OK, so it's going quite well. And Huey definitely starting to know what his name is. When I call it, he comes, which is good. Come on, Huey! And he's not wanting to do his own thing too much. On our journey, we have to cross a few rivers. Trying to encourage the horses over unfamiliar conditions is a real challenge. Well, for some of us, anyway. Oh. Shoot. Yes, I'm very wet. I decide to make camp early to get warm and dry before the sun sets and the temperature drops. As my relationship is blossoming with Hector, I feel confident to let him off the lead as well. It's really nice to see them loose. I've had a really good day today. Perfect ending. But I spoke too soon. As darkness falls, the weather takes a turn for the worse, and Hector and Huey disappear. There's a bad storm just come in and frightened the ponies, and they've both run off. I can't find them anywhere. Hector! Huey! If they've bolted, the chances of finding them will be hard, and a massive setback for us all. I'm Emma Massingale and I'm about halfway through my challenge of walking and training two unbroken Highland ponies, Hector and Huey, across the Highlands of Scotland. With a hundred mile trek and just ten days to train them, using my gentle techniques, I hope by the end of our journey they will allow me to ride them without reins or restraints. <laughs> Last night I set them loose for the first time, but then a storm hit and I've lost them. 
can't find them anywhere. I'm going to have to go and get some shelter myself and try and find them at first light. But on my way back to the camp... I've just found the ponies. Thank goodness for that. Even an experienced horse would find this weather scary, so the fact that the boys have stayed really close to my camp really makes me feel like they've accepted me into their herd. Oh, we'll stick together, eh, boys? After another early start, it's not long before we hit our first obstacle of the day. Peat bogs dominate the highlands, and we've no choice but to go through them. With their short, strong legs, highland ponies have naturally adapted to coping with this landscape. But Hector and Huey have never trodden through a bog before. Where are you going, boys? Where are you going? Where are you going? So it's taking some getting used to. Once we're on more solid land, we come across a stone hut known as a boffy. These offer shelter to wet and weary travellers, just like us. I've never ever been so thrilled to see a roof in all my days. No midges, no ticks, no wind and no rain. It's also the perfect place to step up my training with my more agreeable pony, Hector. What I don't want Hector to do is be frightened of me getting on him for the very first time. So I'm going to reprogram him a little bit by teaching him that when he's frightened of something, the best thing to do is to keep your feet still. To do this, I'll shake something noisy next to him and I'll only remove it when he doesn't try and move away. That's a good boy. And after a while, Hector learns to stand still, which I need him to do while I try to get on his back. This is a dangerous but special moment as it's the first time he's ever been ridden. Good boy. <laughs> Yeah. And after a little more coaxing. Good boy! Good boy! Walk on. Walk on. Hector's coming along really well and I feel very confident on him. It's just a case of now giving him enough time to build his experience and build his confidence. But as for Huey, I might have to admit defeat. Huey, I'm sort of leaving a little bit. I'm just going to focus on Hector now. Yeah, Huey's personality's a little bit odd. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with him. Uh -oh. Ever since we started, he's been very difficult, and I don't think he's ready for me to ride. So for the next couple of days, I focus on riding Hector. But on our last day, we've got one final challenge to overcome. I'm hoping he'll let me ride him across this wide river without bolting or throwing me off. Boy. 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 It's amazing how Hector has accepted me riding him in such a short time. Just a few days ago, I could never have done this. Boy. Yeah! Boy. Safely on dry land, it's not long before our end goal is in sight. Finally, after 100 miles and 10 gruelling days, we reach the west coast of Scotland. We made it, boys. <sighs> We made it. <sighs> Although there's more work to be done with Huey, I'm very confident to introduce my new ponies to my other horses when we get back to Devon. Wow, that was so much harder than I thought it was ever going to be. I started off thinking it was going to be about training horses and, and coming across Scotland. But this journey turned out to be more about the relationship that you can build with a horse over a time and the fact that they each day got a little bit closer to me um, and each day they seemed to want to stay with me more and more was really, really special. It's been epic.